Hi, my name is Matthew, and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today in this video, I'm going to go over using DesignX, a reverse engineering software, to recreate a statue. This statue is pretty cool. It's in a park nearby where I live. I walk by it all the time, but I've noticed it's starting to get rusty. So I thought it'd be really cool to be able to scan it and then reverse engineer it just in case an unforeseeable event happens that causes the statue to break. For starters, I already have my statue imported in DesignX, and I've already done regrouping on it. With these regions, I can now select on them and start using the different wizards to auto-generate some parts. I'm going to use the sweep tool to generate all these different pipe flanges because these are going to be pretty hard to model using just splines. The sweep boards will allow you to select onto a region and it will estimate what that tube's diameter and path is using different methods. We can use an arc method or even a freeform spline line. Clicking on the next arrow will show us a preview of how this body will generate inside the Zynex. And we can also even adjust the path of the spline manually, just in case we want to shorten it or extend it out in different areas. We can also cap the end so that way it gets inserted as a solid body versus a surface. If everything looks good, we can click on the check mark and the body will be generated automatically. It even comes in with a full-on feature tree, so that way if we need to edit any part in the future, such as the spline line or even the path, we can do that as well. Using the same tool, I'm going to select on the smaller pipe right behind the thicker one and just manually adjust the path again. I noticed that the diameter was a little bit odd. I could always manually type it in within the sweep tool, but again, just showing the editability of these features, I'm going to go in and manually change this diameter. After making the change, I can even go into deviation analysis just so I can see how it compares. Because I made the diameter smaller, it is going to appear blue within the deviation analysis. And as you can see from the other pipe, it is a mixture of this blue and red, indicating that the pipe is following the path and it's pretty aligned with given how rough and worn away and rusted the statue is. The Pipe Wizard is another really useful tool when it comes to generating tubes. It acts very similar to the Sweep tool, but allows you to select multiple tubes at once. Because of this, we can now select on what bodies we want to keep. In this case, all three bodies look good, so I'm going to click the next arrow so that way we can make those manual adjustments again. With the Pipe Wizard, it's best to select tubes that have all the similar diameters. In this case, with these smaller tubes, I'm going to separate those into different features. So I'm going to use the pipe wizard just to get these tubes. And once I confirm this, go back and then do it on the other ones. That's because the pipe wizard only uses one diameter at a time. So if you have a mix and match of diameters, it can cause some troubles with the tool. We can even use the pipe wizard to select on multiple regions at once, and it will still generate a single path for these. Just like beforehand, if we need to edit any of the sketches, such as the diameter or maybe even the spline, we can always do that after exiting the wizard by going back into the feature tree. With everything now complete, I now have all of my pipes laid out and we can move on to the base of the statue now. I'm going to select on this region that's listed as a plane, and just like any other normal plane, I'm going to sketch right on top of it and then extrude it right down into the base of the part. Now that we have a part of the base done, we're going to use the bottom face of this triangle to use our mesh sketch tool on. Mesh sketch generates a cutting plane that wherever it intersects with the mesh, a auto sketch line appears. You can then select on these auto sketch lines to insert in new sketch line features that you can use as a reference to generate new sketch lines on, or just make sure that you're in an exact position where the mesh will intersect at this point. Your auto sketch lines will be projected up to the plane that you selected on to generate your mesh sketch. We can then use these inserted in lines as a reference to insert in other features, and they can always be adjusted as we want. We can also edit the auto sketch lines themselves, so after they've been inserted, we can reposition them if needed. These purple lines essentially are snapping points for us to use as a reference when generating new sketch lines. After extruding the base down, we can insert our chamfer features, and we don't need to do any kind of boolean operation because we had merged selected within our extrude tool. The next feature we're going to work on is the statue itself. 
This is pretty complex, so I'm not going to go about modeling it manually, and instead I'm going to utilize the Auto Surface tool. Auto Surface allows you to quickly insert in a solid body or surface body that matches exactly to what the mesh looks like. In this case, I'm selecting the entire statue itself, copying it over into a new mesh, and then filling in the holes so that way it's watertight. Once the holes finish filling in, I can go over to the Healing Wizard tool just to verify that I have no non-manifold sections or extreme points. I can click on OK to heal anything if needed. The Auto Surface tool will ask you to select onto the mesh that you want to generate the solid body from. Also, if this is a mechanical organic, adding any kind of tolerances, and targeted patch counts. Adjusting the amount of patch counts will decrease the amount of spline lines used to create the NURB surfaces that generate the solid body. I typically keep these all in default settings. Now that the tool finished, we have a bunch of surface bodies that have been stitched together, except this one small hole in the bottom. I can go in and manually fix this hole using the fill hole tool, and it'll automatically stitch everything together once this completes to actually create our solid body. Now that we have our solid body in the same position of where our other statue is, we can now show our base again with our tubes and then use the Boolean operation to combine everything together. Now that we have the base and the statue done, all that's left is the fountains. For the fountains, I'm going to use surface modeling to generate these. To create the fountain itself, I'm going to use surface modeling. Using the Mesh Fit tool, I can select onto a region and automatically fit a surface to, to match exactly where those region lies. I'm going to do this on both sides. Now that we have the sides of the fountain done, I'm going to insert a top and back side of this fountain. I'm going to use the Insert Plane tool to first generate a plane that fits on top of the fountain, and then use the Sketch tool to actually sketch out my face. I can use the Fill Face tool to generate my surface and even inverse it if needed. On the back side, I'm going to follow a similar process of generating a plane and then sketching over it to create my surface body. In order to generate the solid body using the solidify tool on these surfaces, I need to make sure that there is no open areas. So with that, I'm going to use the extend surface tools to make sure that everything is overlapping. Even these mesh fit bodies are able to be extended because they are just normal surface bodies. They just happen to be exact fits onto the regions in certain areas. Once everything has been extended out, I'm going to use the solidify tool and select on all of the surfaces to generate my solid body. The Solidify tool allows you to create a solid body from the inside space of a combination of surfaces. I'm going to finish it off with the shell command, just so that way we can have our inside of the fountain. Instead of creating a new fountain for every single part of this, I'm just going to copy this fountain and use the move bodies command to take this fountain head and just place it on top of the other tubes, just to simplify the process. Once everything is in place, I'm going to use one final boolean command to combine these all into one single solid body. With the final boolean command, we now have a single solid body of this entire statue. Base, fountain, tubes, and the statue itself. All as a solid body that can be exported out into other programs or used for measurements. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Please feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on SOLIDWORKS, DesignX, scanning, and 3D printing.